Welcome to Linus Tech Tips at CES 2013. Our trip to the show this year is powered by Corsair, maker of quality PC components and peripherals. Our trusted storage partner is Seagate Technology, and our trusted networking partner is Linsys. In the OCZ suite on the consumer side, we start with the Vertex 3, so this is a Sandforce-based drive. Honestly, the problem with something like a Sandforce-based drive at this point in time is that pretty much everyone and their dog has a Sandforce drive, so you just have to rely on add-ons like extra warranty or you know, just that sort of the, the general brand perception in order to drive sales. So Vertex 4 was an obvious an obvious thing for OCZ to do after they acquired Indolinx. It does use a third-party controller, the actual physical controller on the chip, but it uses an Indolinx firmware, so they're calling that the Everest 2 platform, and it achieves performance that in almost any case is as good as the Vertex 3, but in cases where you're dealing with incompressible data is actually better, so it's a more consistent experience. Right here, we have the latest drive that OCZ's launched. So these two are gonna be the ones that are more focused on moving forwards with their Indolinx technology inside. This one not only uses an Indolinx firmware to control the SSD itself, but it also has the Barefoot 3 controller, which is the first silicon that was actually designed in-house by OCZ to deliver the best possible performance. This drive took something along the lines of 18 months to bring to market, so they were already working on this six months before CES last year. It has a five-year warranty, and it has industry-leading performance. It is right up there with any other two-and-a-half-inch SSD drive because that is pretty much as good as we can do for a two and a half inch SATA 3 drive at this point because the SATA interface is getting pretty close to the limit. So let's talk about what we can do if we move beyond the SATA interface. Now, we've seen Revo Drive products from OCZ in the past and they're doing away with that branding this time or maybe they're not. It looks like there's a, oh yeah, specifications are preliminary and subject to change. So this is the Vector PCIe. This is going to use two Indolinx Barefoot 3 controllers. It uses 32 NAND chips. It comes with cloning software. It has a five-year warranty. It's going to be available in capacities up to one terabyte, and it uses a PCI Express Gen 2 4X interface, giving it a theoretical maximum bandwidth of two gigabytes per second. Now, in the real world, it's capable of achieving about one gigabyte per second, and you're going to see that on the screen to my right, your left, but there's a lot of overhead involved in the PCI Express interface, so Really, to get ahead of this in terms of performance, they'd either have to add more lanes, making it an 8x card, or move to PCIe Gen 3. Now, with these storage devices, there's a lot of validation that goes into them because most PCI Express slots on motherboards, on the motherboard manufacturer side, are only really validated with mainstream stuff like graphics cards and sound cards. So in the past, there have been some finicky issues. So moving ahead to uh, the newest technology that at this point is only even supported on Intel and not even on the AMD side might not have made sense and honestly looking at previous generation products you didn't see the same kind of scaling going from two controllers to four controllers that you saw going from one to two so speaking of the performance scaling from one to two you can see that compared to what a single drive is able to do on the SATA 3 interface we're able to see consistent performance above sort of anything above about 32 kilobytes where you're sitting around well still above 800 megabytes per second reads and writes this drive can consistently deliver about a thousand megabytes per second reads and writes so this is comparable to something that I had to build for myself using an LSI card that cost me about 700 bucks and back in the Sandforce 1 days, I needed eight drives to achieve that kind of performance. So we're only a few generations ahead of that, but we're already looking at performance that's basically space age compared to what we had not that long ago. In our Vector SSD unboxing, we talked about how OCC is changing their image, redefining their processes internally, and trying to refocus right now. So let's have a look at sort of the, the existing generation of enterprise SSDs. I don't know if you guys are familiar with these or not, but this one was actually at CES last year already. It's available in up to 3.2 terabyte capacities, and I know the internet loves to talk about sort of the one terabyte drives that are out or are coming out, or but the reality of it is OCZ's had things like, you know, 3.2 terabyte drives on PCIe, 800 terabyte drives using a SAS interface on uh, on two and a half inch form factor for actually quite a while now. So, it's uh, 
it's interesting. I mean, this is this is all that stuff that we've seen before. But I have Jerome here from OCZ to tell us about something that's actually all new and uses, unlike these previous generation solutions, which are using Sandforce controllers, Sandforce, uh, Sandforce driven kind of firmware updates. This guy right here is actually using OCZ's own intellectual property. So tell us about the Intrepid 3. Right, so thanks. So this is our Intrepid 3 product. This is our next generation SATA product. So as you mentioned, this is using our in-house controller, our Everest 2 controller. And this is going to be an evolution of our existing SATA products like our Deneva 2. So with Intrepid 3, you're going to get higher performance for sequentials, also higher performance for random input output operations per second. And this one's also optimized for incompressible data. Deneva 2 is optimized for compressible, and Intrepid 3 is going to give you really great performance on incompressible data. So these two solutions are potentially complementary to each other. Okay, so I mean, it's, there's a lot of guys that make SSDs, so I think the differentiation really comes from a few different factors. So number one is the variety of the solutions. Number two is going to be the support that's provided. Number three is quality of the components that are being used. And number four is going to be sort of how you guys differentiate yourselves in the market and sort of that, that X factor thing. So this is something we discussed on our live stream. We do live streams every Friday night uh, when OCZ announced this, but OCZ has a solution now for accelerating volumes, whether it's using a PCIe solution, a SATA solution, a SaaS solution on Linux platforms, as well as uh, what other platforms. So why don't you tell us, uh, we're, we're going to wait for this demo to restart at the beginning, and we're going to get Jerome to walk us through it. Okay, so here we're showing OCZ's new solution for Linux acceleration. This is our LXL platform. So what we're doing here is we're showing in our Storage Pro XL management software, you can see we have the Neva and a Z drive. Uh, OCZ volumes uh, installed and what we're doing here is we're selecting the existing volumes that you want to accelerate so we're picking the OCZ volumes here as cache volumes and our LXL software automatically you know uh, pre-discovers all the volumes and here you can see the existing volumes that you're going to accelerate so we're selecting those so what we've done so far is we've already selected the OCZ volumes that we use as cache now we're selecting the volumes to be accelerated and here you can see we're selecting the policies to be used for the acceleration so essentially these will tell you what data to put in the cache, what's the hot data. So we have some pre-configured uh, algorithms as well as you can select custom algorithms. So now there we've selected the volumes, now they're accelerated and we're going to move over. You can see in the summary all the four volumes that were installed are now accelerated with the OCZ Deneva and the OCZ. Sure. Uh, to be clear guys, the volumes that are being accelerated here are going to be mechanical volumes that were assigned, that uh, uh, an SSD volume is then being assigned to, to cache. Now I can tell you guys right now looking at the interface for this, assuming it's going to work this way in the final model, check this out guys, 15, uh, it's 15,000, 15,000 15, total IOPS per second, which is much better than you can do with any mechanical volume, as we're about to see when they actually turn the volume acceleration off. This is much easier than what I've seen in implementations from LSI and Adaptech in their RAID storage managers, and not nearly as restrictive, because you can take SATA drives, you can take PCIe drives, you can clump them together, you can separate them apart. So you could say you've got a 1.6 terabyte Revo drive, you go, I want one terabyte for dedicated SSD storage, I want 600 gigabytes that's going to actually cache a mechanical volume I have somewhere else on the server. Um, this is extremely exciting because up until now there's been no real caching solution for SSD available on Linux at all, in spite of that being where most of the, most of the server data is actually dealt with. Um, now, is this just going to be Linux or are you guys going to have other solutions as well? We're going to have other solutions as well. We already have a solution for VMware. It's called VXL. The Linux solution is called LXL as we've discussed. And we're going to also have a Windows solution which will be called WXL. Thanks so much, Jerome. This has been very helpful. And don't miss any of our CES 2013 coverage here at the show. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips. Powered by Corsair, Seagate Technology, and Linksys.